Hey, what's up? Sam from Broken Knights Games. So this is going to be a quick tutorial. I'm going to be showing you the new Unity input system, how to get it set up in your project, and how to set up uh, inputs, as well as how to set up local multiplayer. So I will probably be using this in my Sumo Showdown project to handle the local multiplayer uh, and player joining it. The new input system handles things pretty cleanly. Um, also, and it'll let me be able to use the rumble on the controllers, uh, which you would previously have to buy a third party library to do that. But now it's all natively supported with the new Unity input system. So let's go ahead and get started. But before we do, uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel as I post regular game dev related videos every other Friday. All right. So let's check out this new input system, shall we? Okay, so looking at my uh, Unity scene here, I just created a very simple um, maze, and then the goal is uh, each player can move their, their guy through the maze. Um, so this is currently using the old input system, and I have a couple scripts here on my player object. I'll show you those here. Um, so we have uh, this player input handler script and this mover script um, on a character controller. So if we take a look at the mover script first, it's a very simple example here. Um, so basically we have a move speed, um, a reference to our character controller, uh, the move direction, and our input vector. So um, just setting up a controller on the awake and then um, the set input vector is a public method where we will set the direction that we want to move. Um, and then the update, uh, we are just uh, moving our controller the target direction um, with our move speed. So then we have our player input handler. Um, and this is a very simple uh, script as well. It's just getting our mover object. And then um, on the update, we're just checking our input uh, X and Y on our, on our axis and then setting the input vector on the, uh, the mover. And I split this out because um, instead of just reading the input from the mover, um, just because it separates things a little bit and it'll make things a little bit easier once I show you how to switch to the new input system. Okay, so to get the new input system set up, we're going to go to Window, Package Manager. Okay, so in the Package Manager, we're going to search for Input and it's not coming up, so we have to make sure we are searching for preview packages. That's under advanced. And you'll see this new input system. Um, so we are currently on version one, uh, preview five. Um, this has been kind of in development for a while, uh, but it's, it's pretty stable now. So I will install that into my project. All right, so we get a warning here. It basically says that um, the back end to use the new input system is not enabled and we need to enable that. And by doing so, we have to restart the editor. So I'm gonna click yes. It's gonna finish importing. And then we're gonna restart Unity. All right, so we're here in Unity and I uh, reopened up the project after applying that setting. So we're going, going to go to edit, project settings, and we're gonna go to input system package. Um, and this is where we can store the settings for the new input system. So we don't, and it's stored in an asset. So we don't have our asset yet. So we're gonna click on create settings asset. All right, uh, so we have our new input settings asset here. Uh, you can basically set up things um, like some dead zones and uh, button tap delays. Um, also supported devices, and I'm going to select gamepad. Um, you can also go into specific gamepads if you want, um, like Xbox or Switch, but um, they did a pretty good job of making this generic uh, for most gamepads, so I'm just gonna do gamepad for now. Um, and we're gonna close this. All right, so now um, we need to create an action map, or input actions. So I'm going to go to assets, create, and here at the bottom we have this input actions. And we'll call this player controls. And I'll open this up and show you how this works. Okay, so we have our 
So it's broken up between action maps, actions, and then uh, settings and with, for each action. So I will add a action map and we'll call this player movement. All right, so now under player movement, we can add actions. This is a very simple uh, game. We're just moving, so I'm going to keep this action here, but we're going to rename it to be um, movement. And then under movement, you can add bindings. So if you want to support keyboard or a gamepad, um, you could bind both of those uh, inputs to one action. And then um, I'll show you in the script, you just read the, from the action instead of reading from each individual input device. So it's kind of abstracted that way um, and makes it a little bit cleaner. So um, under path, we're gonna do gamepad and I'm just gonna select the left stick. And then if we also wanted to add keyboard support, we can go back to our input settings and under supported devices, I will also select keyboard and we'll save. So in our movement, I will also add, um, we're gonna do a 2D vector composite. We'll just call this WASD. Um, so then up, we can do, I'll click this listen button and just press the key. Whoops. So we want W up, down, listen. S, left, and right. There, so now we can uh, read from our keys. And then after you get your input set up, you want to click on Save Asset. Otherwise, this won't save if you close it. Another thing you can do is check this Auto Save box. Um, so it'll just automatically see your changes as you make them. So I'm just gonna close that for now. Um, so now on our player object, um, we have this player input handler script. We'll be modifying this. So we're going to our player object here. I'm going to go to add component and under input, we're gonna click this player input. So here we have to assign input actions. So we only have our one input actions, our player's controls that we can create it there. So I will select that. So UI input and camera input, we can leave these blank. Um, that's just if you're configuring a UI input and um, a camera is if your input needs to reference the camera, um, which ours does not. So, um, and then under behavior, you can choose a couple options. So there's send messages, broadcast messages, invoke unity events, or invoke C sharp events. Um, for simplicity's sake, I will choose input invoke unity events. And then if you expand the events, you can see um, there's some basic ones like on device, uh, lost and regained. So if your controller becomes unplugged, you can subscribe to those and handle those. Um, or even if the controls change, so like going from keyboard to gamepad, for example. Um, and then you can see this player movement. So that's the actual event that we have configured. So that's our movement. So we can configure a function to listen to this. Um, so I will open up our player input handler and instead of reading from the horizontal and vertical in the update function I will just go ahead and delete that um, and I'll add a method and we'll call this public void I'll call this on move and the player input will send a um, what's called a, a an object called a callback context as a argument so I will add a callback context and in order to use that we will import the unity engine input system input action namespace and I'll call this context so if we look at our context so there's a couple properties we can read such as duration uh, canceled um, you know started or stop um, but what we really want is read value and so we know this is a vector two because it's a joystick or a, a two axis movement. And I will just go ahead and say mover set input vector and I'll just pass in our value. 
All right, so now I can go ahead and test this to see if it works. Um, but before I do that, I need to set up the player movement to call that method. So I will go to my player object, I'll select that, and then we'll go to our player input handler and I will say on move. All right, I'll save that and let's try this out. Okay, so I'm using WASD and it is moving and we're no longer using the old input system. We are now using the new one. Um, and then I can also grab my controller and do the same thing. And we can guide the cube through the maze. So cool, that works. So now how would we do co-op or two players at once? So to do that, um, we'll need what's called a player input manager. So I'm just going to create a new object and we'll just call this player input manager. And then we'll go to add components, go to input and player input manager, we will select. And what this will do is it will handle um, joining and I guess spawning players or player inputs. Um, and you can you can do different uh, configurations here. So like join behavior, uh, join when a button is pressed um, or you can do actions or manually. Um, so I will do join when a button is pressed and you can also limit the number of players. So in this case, we only want two players. And then there's split screen here, which I haven't played around with, but from my understanding, it lets you split the camera like in a split screen co-op uh, scenario. Um, but going back to the, to joining here, uh, it wants a player prefab object. And what this is, what this will do is it'll actually spawn a new object under the scene when a new player joins. Um, there's a couple ways you can do this. I've seen it where um, you click a button to join and it actually spawns a new like character on the scene and you can move it that way. But I kind of like to separate um, that stuff a little bit out and have things kind of preset up. So what I'm going to do is actually I will duplicate my player object here and I'll move one over here. I also have created a blue material and I will give that guy a blue material and we'll call this player two. This guy here player one. And then I'm going to also create another object. I'm just going to call this player input and I'll show you this why I'm doing this in a second here. I will add a player input. Um, I'll also add a player input handler script. Um, we're going to have to modify this. Um, so, okay, so here's how I'm going to do this. Um, we're going to first add a reference to the our player input. Um, so I'll do private player input. Player uh, input equals get component player input. Assign a reference in the awake method. And if I just go to player input dot, um, we can see what kind of properties we can access here. And then there's this player index. So the first player will be player index zero, the second player will be player index one. So what I'm gonna do, I'll do var index equals player input dot player index. And we're going to assign the player mover to the player index that we want. So we're gonna go to mover and we're gonna modify this. We're gonna add a serialize field and we're gonna do private int player index. I'll just give this uh, a zero for now. Uh, and then we're gonna also gonna add a public method, um, public int get player index. And we're just gonna return our player index value. All right, so now back in our player input handler, what I'm gonna do to get, to make sure we assign um, the right mover to the current player input handler that gets spawned, um, what I'm going to do is movers equals find objects of type mover. All right, so we're going to find all the movers and we have our player index from our player input. Um, so our mover will be movers. First or default, I'll use system link to 
right? A link expression. So M. So the mover were M dot get player index equals our index. Okay. So in our player input object, we have our player input handler. Um, we need to configure our player input. I will just copy from our player object and paste the component values. Um, just take a look, make sure that this looks okay. Player movement, okay, perfect. That looks okay. So now what I'm gonna do is make this a prefab and delete it from our scene. And I'll go to our player objects and I will get rid of our player input. We don't need that. And we also don't need the player input handler. Remove these. All right, and then uh, the player one mover, um, this is player index zero, that's perfect. Uh, player two, this player index, I will make one. And then our player input manager, um, it asks for that player prefab object. So I'm, this is what I'm gonna use, the player input prefab that we just created. So what's gonna happen is, as soon as input is received, it's gonna spawn the first player, and that'll be player index zero. And that player input handler will find our mover script with player index zero. When the second button is pressed, it'll spawn our second player input, and that'll be player index one for a second player, and that'll also find the mover with the second, uh, with the player index of one. So if I hit play, I'll show you how this works. Right, so now if I go in and hit play, and I grab my one controller here, and I hit A. I'm moving the red guy, and if I hit grab my other controller, and also hit the button to join, I can move this one with the other joystick. Um, now I see I'm getting some uh, exceptions here. I'll see what's going on. So we're getting a null reference here, so I'll just debug this. Okay, so our mover is null. What happened? Our player input is also null. Okay, so I cleared up those errors. Um, it's kind of strange. Um, it may be a bug. Like I said, this is a preview package still, um, but I think it's it's coming together to a point where I would feel comfortable using it, especially in a longer term project because um, you can always update it as they continue to release uh, the patches to it. Um, so basically on the on move function, I'm just doing a null check on our mover. Um, which is strange because we saw that it was getting initialized in the awake method uh, correctly. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what was going on there, but um, with the null check, uh, we don't get those exceptions anymore. And as you can see, um, I can still play. So if I join the red and then join the blue, um, I can move them through the mazes and we don't get those errors anymore. So like I said, the new input system is a little bit buggy, but it has come a long way from uh, where it was about a year ago, and I think it's a big improvement over the native input um, the, or the legacy input system that was in Unity, because that kind of um, is a pain for configuring multiple controllers. Um, and I think this new input system really handles uh, multiple player input really well. So I hope you found this helpful, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up and. Uh, a like share this with uh, your friends um, also don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you next time bye